Hello, today we are going to talk about rational exponents. Uh, rational exponents are just exponents that are fractions, um, and actually uh, they actually convert into radical uh, functions. So we'll talk about what all that looks like, how it works, so let's get started. So we want to think about it in terms of the power-to-power -power rule, all right? So, so we can see how this turns into a radical function. Uh, we have b to the one-half, a radical expression, b to the one-half squared. Uh, if I use the power-to-power -power rule, that says to multiply these exponents, and half of 2 is 1, so this just ends up being b. And I can do the same thing with something like one-third, so one-third to the third power, or one-third cubed. I multiply these, uh, one-third of 3 is 1, so we get, again, just b. It works with numbers, too, so 9 to the one-half squared, uh, half of 2 is 1, so this just ends up being 9. And then... Uh, same thing with our 8 here. So 1 third of 3 is just 1. So 8 to the first power is 8. All right, so what that kind of tells us, if we think about what the opposite of squaring a number is, the opposite of squaring a number is square root, okay? Uh, the opposite of cubing a number is cube root. All right, so essentially this is canceling this out, and that's the same way uh, radicals cancel out exponents and vice versa. All right, so kind of the same idea. 9 to the 1 half power, if you put this into your calculator, you get 3. Same thing with 8 to the 1 third power, you would get 2. Okay, so again, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, so 2 cubed is 8. Um, and so 8 to the 1 third is 2. And essentially what that's telling us is that the square root of 9 is also 3, so that's just telling us that this half and this square root do the same thing. Same thing with this 1 third power is actually just a cube root. Okay, this and this do the same thing. All right, so they're, they're equivalent, and that's what they're going to ask you to do. They're going to say, take an expression like 8 to the 1 third and make it a radical expression, or vice versa, take the square root of 9 and turn it into an exponential uh, function. So uh, 1 half, uh, the square root is the same thing as 1 half. All right, so let's take a look at this in practice. So essentially, uh, we want to take anything with an exponent and turn it into something with a radical, and then vice versa. Anything with a radical, we want to turn it into something with an, ex uh, an exponent. So if I, if I can get this to work this time, looks like I can. Um, a to the 1 half, we've got to turn it into, it's exponential, we've got to turn it into radical. So uh, the 2 in the denominator means square root. So I'm going to take the square root of A. Uh, same thing with 1b. It's the square root of uh, 22, and square root is the same thing as 1 half. So we can write the base of 22 to the 1 half power. And yeah, you guys can copy this on your paper with me. And now here, we are taking 7w, and all of it is to the 1 half power, which means we can put all of 7w under the radical. Okay, And then in 1D, it's a little bit tricky. The only part of this problem under the radical is the x. So this becomes 2 times x to the 1 half power. It's very important you understand the difference between these two problems. All of 7w is in parentheses, so, and that's all to the 1 half power, so all of 7w is under the radical. Uh, in this problem, the only thing under the radical is the x, so the only thing with the one half power is the x. So there's no parenthesis here to to hit this two with the with the with the one half power as well. So just two times the square root of x, which is two times x to the one half power. So we're going to move on. Now, uh, finding the nth root. Okay, so that's the cube root, the fifth root, the square root. Th they all essentially mean the same thing, and you know, it's really important that you kind of remember your basic, uh, you know, 3 to the 3rd power, uh, you know, 2 to the 4th, all the things we've been kind of working on le recently to really help you go back and forth, okay? So, uh, if I think about this, the cube root of 27, what they're doing here, they're essentially, they're trying to find the same number multiplied by itself three times. Okay? That's what the cube root does. So, 3 times 3 times 3 is 27, so the cube root of 27 is 3. All right. It's kind of like what we talked about the other day uh, with the volume problem um, where we, you know, we took a cube. And uh, this is going to be terrible, but it, whatever, no big deal. OK, so there's my kind of cube. And uh, the other day we said, OK, if I made this uh, three, 
then we, you know, the reason we came up with why this is called cube is because you're really finding the volume of the cube. Okay. Uh, so if I know one side of a cube, uh, one side length of a cube, I can find its volume by cubing that number because they're all the same. Length times width times height is the volume of a cube. So three cubed. And it, it's kind of the same way if I switch this to maybe a different color and say the volume is 27. Okay, we're working backwards to get to three. So what number can I, what, you know, what's the length, width, and height of this cube so that I can get the, you know, the, the side length of it. So the cube root, in this case, of 27 would be the three, one of our lengths of our cube. So you're looking for, in this case, three of the same number to find out the cube root. Uh, same thing with 32, uh, the fifth root of uh, 32. You're looking for what number can I multiply by itself five times to get 32. Well, that number happens to be 2. So the fifth root of 32 is 2. All right. So here's the first one, 64, right? Um, and you're looking at 64, and you're probably thinking, okay, you probably think 8 times 8 is 64, but that would be the square root of 64. So we're looking for what number can I multiply by itself three times to get 64. So I might think of this as... Um, you know, it's 4, so I could say 4 times 4 is 16 times 4 is 64. So the cube root of uh, 64 is 4, okay? Uh, 10,000, uh, if you think of this as, uh, you know, essentially, I got to get four zeros into this problem, so it's 10 multiplied by itself, 4 times 10 times 10 is 100 times 10 is a thousand times ten is ten thousand. One, two, three, four zeros. Uh, it's a straight mark. One, two, three, four zeros, and four zeros here. So the fourth root of ten thousand is ten. All right. So and honestly, these can be calculator problems for you if you if you need them to be. I think it is a great way to practice these. You're going to see the same numbers uh, in your math book all the time. You're really going to get used to it. Uh, so my suggestion to you is just kind of kind of brute force your way through it uh, so these all become much more comfortable to you. All right, so uh, if we look at these, this is the same idea. They're essentially, essentially starting with a radical exponent. Uh, I'm sorry, a rational exponent, and they're turning it into a radical, radical expression. So 125 to the one-third power is actually one-third power is actually the cube root of 125, uh, which ends up being 5, okay? Uh, 1,296, the fourth root. So I'm looking for a number I'd multiply by itself four times. That happens to be six. Six times six times six times six. All right. I'm going to show you how I kind of mess with that here. Okay. Uh, where I kind of, if I don't really know the answer, how I kind of work my way through it. Um, and maybe I can even do that with this one. So when I'm looking at 3A, you know, maybe I don't see three times three times three. Maybe I see nine times three. So I might say, whoops, I got to go back. I might say, um, you know, that this equals the, the cube root of 9 times 3, right? And then I look, oh, wait, 9 is 3 times 3, and there, there's my answer. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27, so therefore the cube root of 27, I got a group of 3, so that's the cube root, it's 3, all right? So uh, when I look at 256, um, when I look at 256, Six, I think of uh, 16, dang it, 16, there we go, uh, times 16 is 256. All right. Um, but that's only a pair of numbers. I need four of them, okay? So when I think of I need four of the same number, well, 16 is four times four. And times four times four. Now I got my group of four. So the, oh, forgot my little four there. So the fourth root of 256 ends up being four. All right, so you can just kind of work your way through using your multiplication facts and then keep breaking the number down. All right. And, uh, you know, maybe when I get back, I will show you like, because you could think of this as two times 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 two. Times two. Uh, and there'd be two groups of four. I'm sorry, two groups of two, two groups of four twos, which would still give you four for an answer, all right? Uh, I'll explain that when I get back. So on the next one.
Oh, shoot. I think I goofed. I did. Bam. Bam. There we go. I meant to just do that. All right. So, actually, we're going to skip that for now. Uh, now, we're going to get into how we solve exponential equations. Okay? And the key here, in an exponential equation, the variable occurs as the exponent. So, um, what you're uh, essentially going to have to do uh, like here, there's our variable, is you have to make the bases the same. And that kind of goes back to that last problem, okay? So they're not always going to be the same to start, but our job is to make the bases the same, and then we can say that x equals 3, okay? Uh, and, and I'll show you how that works on the next slide. Same thing here. 4n equals 4 to the 1 half power. Well, if the bases are the same, then n has to be 1 half, okay? So let's take a look at how we actually solve these. So... 9 uh, to the x power equals uh, 729, 729. So I'm looking to see, you know, obviously 729 is not 9, all right? Um, and so I'm like, well, what can I, it's got to be 9. 9 to some power has to, is probably 729, okay? So when I rewrite this, um, you know, i got 9 to the x equals now, I'm thinking 9. I might take my calculator. 9 squared is 81. 9 to the third. Oh, 9 to the third is 729. Okay. And that's essentially what you have to do. Uh, I brought down the, the part that had the variable uh, exponent, and then I just had to kind of fix the other side of the equation so that they have the same ba base. They both have the base of 9. That means their exponents are equal. Okay. And that's essentially all you do. X equals 3. All right, and actually, now that I think about it, um, I think I have all this flying in. I do. There we go. There we go. And so we take something a little different. 16 uh, to the 2x minus 1 power, and we have 8. Well, I can't make, you know, 8 squared isn't uh, uh, 8 squared is not 8, so I can't just make this an 8, but I think I can make both of these 2, right? So if you think about all the exponents we've had recently, uh, you know, 2 times 2 or 2 squared is 4, 2 to the 3rd is 8, 2 to the 4th is 16. So this can be written as 2 to the 4th, and this can be written as 2 to the 3rd. So I do that. 16 is 2 to the 4th, and then I bring, you know, write the exponent next to it, 4 times 2x minus 1, and then 2 to the 8th is 2 to the 3rd. And once I have their bases equal, I can set their exponents equal. So my math, the problem I'm trying to solve, is going to be this. The exponents, 4 times x, uh, 2x minus 1 equals 3. And then I'm just going to solve that. I'm going to distribute. I'm going to add 4 to both sides. Plus 4 is going to be 7 over here. I divide by 8, and I get an exponent of 7 eighths. Okay? So again, this was a little tricky because we had to fix both bases. Both bases, in this case, ended up being 2. All right? I only got a little bit of time left, so I want to keep moving. Uh, we're going to try these. We'll do them together. All right. Uh, so what I'm thinking about is 5 to the x. I can't make 5 any simpler, so I don't have to worry about that. So 5 to the x power equals. Now, uh, 125 uh, as a power of 5, uh, as a base of 5. I know 5 squared is 25, so 5 to the third, in fact, is 25. You can just play around with the numbers in a calculator until you get it. All right. And again, once the bases are equal, the exponents are equal. And in this problem, we have nothing else to do. X is 3. So if I put 5 to the 3rd there, I will get 125. All right? Same thing here. This one's actually not too bad. Uh, hopefully you can see it right away. The 144, I can say, is 12 squared, and that gives me the same, the same base. Okay? So I get 12 uh, to the 2x minus plus, sorry, 3 equals 12 squared. I got about 45 seconds to solve this problem. So the exponents, now that the bases are equal, the exponents are equal, and that's the problem I'm solving. 2x plus 3 equals 2. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. And I get, uh, I'm going to go, up, I'm going to go up here. I get 2x equals negative 1, and I divide by 2, and that happens to be my answer right there. X to the, uh, X is negative 1 half. All right, and that makes sense. If I put 1 half, negative 1 half here, uh, 
2 times negative 1 half is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. And 12 squared is 144.